Welcome to the OT pregame show as we get you excited for a very important football matchup between the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks and the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. I'm Ryan Prady and I'm joined by Susie Conran. Susie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to dive into this end of season matchup between two unique teams. Last year, this would have been a conference game, but this year North Dakota is independent, so that's kind of interesting. It's very interesting as they make their move to the Missouri Conference. The Lumberjacks have had a rough season so far this year. Going to this game on a three game losing streak, the three and six Jacks have dealt with injuries all season long, but it's still important to finish off the season strong. What would a win mean, what would a win mean to this team today? Well, Ryan, it's always good to finish strong, and with some players in different positions, if they perform well, they could even have a dual threat option heading into next season. Well, you speak about quarterbacks, one of which NU's Case Cookus has been off the field since the second game of the season, where he experienced some bad deja vu, breaking that same collarbone against the same Eastern Washington team. With Cookus out, it brought in backup Daniel Bridgegat. Yeah. Bridgegat only played six games this season and threw over 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. He added something new that Cookus did not have, and that was a mobile game. But that became a problem when it resulted in a lower leg injury. That brought in a true freshman quarterback, Gino Campiotti. Man, and that's a player that should have not even been in that situation. He was a third string for a reason. I mean, he's still just a boy. He's playing with grown men. Imagine being on freshman on varsity team. You don't play much. Your roles to get experience with this big dogs. And then when you finally become an upperclassman, you're the team. You're that go-to guy. That situation that Campiotti was in was rushed when both quarterbacks went down with injuries. The struggle of Campiotti, head coach Jerome Sowers had to bring in a fourth string quarterback, wide receiver Brandon Porter. The quarterback, he, he made the transition to quarterback mid-game during the homecoming matchup against Cal Poly and got his first start as a QB against UC Davis two weeks ago. But it's not Porter's first time under center, right, Ryan? It definitely is not. He was the quarterback back in his high school days at Oak Hills. He actually broke the school record of most passing yards in a season with 1,308. You see here his stats on and a season. Gets 90 passing yards in two games. And those short two games, two touchdowns as well, being that mobile quarterback, 335 rushing yards. He is that dual threat player, as we have seen recently, of his change from wide receiver to quarterback. And his ability to play both positions saves Sowers in this tough situation. Now, Porter's change from quarterback to receiver created a domino effect with his other receiver roles. One in particular is Chancellor Brewington, who has a new position as the number two guy. He was the third option with 230 yards on the season and now has to change from the deep ball threat to being a slot receiver. Keep in mind, Brewington is tall but does not have that much weight behind him. He is now getting in between big middle linebackers, so hopefully this doesn't lead to yet another lumberjack injury. You make a good point there. Being in those trenches as a speed receiver who is used to getting hit by secondary defense is a big change. And speaking of any injuries, there's been a lot of the inactives on this depth chart throughout the season. Yeah, let's take a look. Case Cookus injured first game of the year. Daniel Bridgegad, we've mentioned his leg injury. And starting cornerback Miles Dumas, who also only lasted one game. And multi-threat running back Nate Stinson, who went out against Missouri State. On the bright side, safety starter Wes Sutton had an immediate impact after missing his first few games. And that brings us up to date. As we mentioned, the North Dakota game is the last one of the year, and that means the last game for seniors. Reported Mikhail Paladino spoke with some of the upperclassmen and what this game means to them. With NAU football season coming to a close and senior night just minutes away, NAU seniors reflected on their time as Lumberjacks. It's been a long one for sure, uh, but it's felt real fast. Um, you know, I enjoyed it here, met a lot of great people, uh, you know, Maurice, that's kind of been my guy right there. We met when we got here, kind of clicked off instantly, and you know, he's just, he's just made it fun here. Being part of the NAU football family helped these men grow. Learned a lot, you know, about myself as a man and also on the football field. Met some wonderful people, uh, just been trying to grind and get better on and off the field. Put to test, you know, what they teach me and things like that, but uh, I think it's been a great ride overall. Throughout their four years, each player created special bonds with their teammates. Jay Goss, because he's the guy that I came in with. Emmanuel Butler, we be, we be competing every day in practice. Jay Cook, that's my guy since day one. For every athlete, there's always that one play in your career that you will always remember. We're going for two over here, and we stopped them, and, you know, there's a big crowd, and we stopped them game winning. Game, went, game was over, we won the game, so you know, that was real good. First time I've ever defense been on the field, we actually won the game. You know, I feel like that will 
be with me, you know, forever, and I'll never forget that. So now leaves the question, what's next for the Lumberjack seniors? I'm going to go to Canada to play uh, football out there, professional football. But, you know, uh, football isn't everlasting. Um, so I'm going to try to put my degree to work, which is criminal justice. The seniors want to leave a legacy and words for future Lumberjacks. I want to see the team come together, got the athletes to do it, you know, coaches to hold the players more accountable. Uh, really, you know, those are the biggest things I would say that helped turn this program around. For the overtime, I'm Michaela Palladino. Thanks for that, Michaela. Now, one senior we did not mention is star receiver Emmanuel Butler. His new career has given him a real shot at the pros. Our reporter Lauren Hunt caught up with him and has the story. Emmanuel Butler, one of the greatest wide receivers to wear a lumberjack uniform, surprisingly did not have any offers coming out of high school, except for one. Emmanuel was the only um, school to take a chance on me, take a chance on allowing me to further my education and play the sport, I, sport that I love. So for them, I mean, for that, um, I'll always have love for them, um, always be thankful for them. Um, and I feel like throughout my, throughout my five years here, I've had nothing less of, a, of an awesome experience. Throughout his career at NAU, Butler has shown his fans many memorable moments, but one he will never forget. Uh, beating UTEP was pretty awesome. It was my first time beating an FBS school since I've been here. In pro, uh, so in, in the program history that I've been here, it was my first time beating an FBS school. It was an awesome feeling, you know what I mean? So there, there was nothing like that. That was, that was an awesome feeling. From the moment that they met, Butler and quarterback Case Cookus created an unbreakable bond that can be seen on and off the field. You know, first off, it, it felt like we had that immediate connection. And, uh, you know, I've said that so many times now, but I, I, it's probably because of how good that guy is. You know, I, I think anyone can have connection with that guy. He can go up and catch the ball uh, wherever you put that thing. Throughout the years, um, our relationship has, has grown tremendously. We've both gone through um, some, some heartache and some injuries together, and I think that also brought us closer together. I think we both understand what we've gone through, and I know he's been through a lot, and I've been through a lot. Not only have his teammates loved working with him, but so has his offensive coordinator, Aaron Flugrad. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. You know, this was my uh, first full-time job up here at NAU after being a GA, and um, having him and Elijah Marks as first wide receivers, it, it was a great uh, duo there, but uh, yeah. having the opportunity to develop him and just seeing uh, him grow over the years has been uh, great as a coach, and uh, that's why you do what you do. Not only are his current coaches pleased with his performance, NFL scouts are also checking him out. But that hasn't changed the way Butler approaches the game. I really feel pressured. Uh, I, I kind of honestly think about it the same way that I did when, uh, when I was in high school and we had a whole bunch of scouts. It's, it's, it's like the same. Scouts just come, watch you practice. So there's no real pressure. All you're doing is playing football just like you always do. As his NAU football career comes to an end, it's really only the beginning to the rest of his life. Uh, the next couple months will be really telling for him and he's going to have an opportunity to uh, do some, you know, combines or pro days and all-star games, and he's going to see where he stacks up. I know he's going to do great things in whatever he does, whether that's in the NFL, you know, um, Canada, I, I cross seas, whatever he wants to do, uh, he's going to do awesome at it. Doesn't even matter if he's playing football. Like, uh, he's a he's a great young man, and uh, it was an honor to play with him. Heading into his last game, Butler has a few final words to go out by. You always want to finish strong. You never, you never want to go out sad, as Migos would say. So we got we to gotta get the W. For the overtime, I'm Lauren Hunt. Thanks to Lauren and Butler. Now looking at last week, and he did not play as they were supposed to take on the Hornets from Sacramento State. This game was canceled due to the poor air quality. As you see in that picture, look at all that smoke from those raging fires in California. But does this have an extra week of benefit, or does this hurt the Jacks? Well, taking a week off can really help or hurt a team, Ryan. It gives them some time to really relax and make sure that the players are at 100%, but it can also do some damage. Not having the momentum from previous weeks headed into the next week almost makes the team feel relaxed. As long as the Jacks take a break and take the time to heal and come out strong, then they can finish their season with a win against North Dakota. Well, North Dakota did play last week, and they got the dub against Portland State. They won 17-10, and here's a review of their season so far. The Fighting Hawks are 6-4 on the season and suffer from a tough schedule playing teams like number 9 Washington, number 5 Sam Houston State, and some ranked Big Sky opponents. They did beat some ranked opponents and their season with their run-heavy offense, and they have five players with over 500 rushing yards on the season, and their red zone offense has been near perfect. Now, North Dakota has been in playoff berth in their sights, 
but they need to beat NAU in order to be selected as one of the 15 at-large teams out of the 24 teams that will make this FCS playoffs. How's the chance of getting a spot? Well, the Fighting Hawks are currently ranked 25th in the latest FCS poll. This season has a huge number of teams that have six wins going into the final weekend. So if the Fighting Hawks want to have a good chance at the postseason, they need to win today. Well, let's look at this history of this matchup. Last time these two teams met was in 2016, when Lumber Jacks blew a 31-17 lead in the fourth quarter. And he does lead the series, though, 4-2 and is undefeated at home. Now we look at 2016, they had